What's up marketers? In today's video, we're going to talk about a creative strategy that explodes ad accounts. This is what creates unicorn ads, the ones that can last for years in an ad account. So I recently did an analysis on some of our brand's ad accounts and this creative strategy actually accounted for a big majority of the type of ads that we were running that were those unicorn ads. And the reason why? Well, it's a master at stopping the scroll, for better or worse. And to give you a little taste of the strategy in action, maybe you'll remember this really popular advertisement. You would not believe the mother load I just So dropped. what does this ad have in common with all of these ads. So what is this strategy? This is actually called taboo advertising. And no, I did not make this up. I actually found this term when I was doing research for this video. Now it's really interesting, in this is JSTOR article, they actually talk about the marriage between taboo advertising and humor and how you can use humor to talk about taboos. And I do think for television or for longer form content, that's really effective. But I've seen that you can also lean into taboo advertising on your Facebook ads without really having to have a long convoluted storyline. And essentially what taboo advertising is, it's the use of a taboo for drawing and maintaining attention. Stop popping your pimples. Again, leaning into these type of taboos have been some of my top performers over the last few months. In my research, I also found that this type of advertising was referred to as buzz marketing. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna call it taboo advertising. So what is a taboo, right? So I'm looking up on Google. A taboo is a social or religious custom prohibiting or forbidding the discussion of a particular practice or forbidding association with a particular person, place, or thing. So in the US, I would say Trump is a bit of a taboo, right? And taboos for me are divided in between religious taboos or social or societal taboos. And even though there is such a thing as taboo advertising, that does not mean that you should try advertising all types of taboos, right? There are certain types of taboos that go way too far. In fact, when I was doing research for this video, I went to chat GBT and I was like, give me a list of taboos that I can talk about for this video. And the taboos that it gave me were like, <laughs> there, there's a spectrum of taboo, right? On one hand, you have the should get you arrested taboo, which is the list that ChatGPT gave to me. And on the other side of taboo, you have things that are uncomfortable to talk about with conservative family members at dinner taboo, right? And that's the area that you want to play in in your advertising. In fact, on, in the article on taboo advertising that I was reading, it actually said that the taboos that are most commonly used in advertising are ones that have to do with sex and death. So what are some list of taboos, right? There's serving yourself first at a table, eating before everyone else is served, avoiding eye contact, standing too close to someone, rude finger gestures, burping in public, spitting in public, not saying hello, not cleaning up after your dog. It's interesting. The list of taboos that I actually found was most applicable to advertising was in a Quora thread. So the question is, what are the most hidden taboos in today's society? And we have female sexuality. This is an interesting one because on Facebook ads, it's really common to sell prescriptions to things like Viagra or any other type of male performance drug, whereas you're not allowed to sell vibrators and like female pleasure devices essentially. So, you know, just a thing to know, not gonna go anymore to that. But I really love this list. So we, it includes female sexuality, mediocre laziness. I love that one. Dirt and germs was another interesting one because I do think that it is a bit of a taboo to see someone's house many messy or to see lots of dirt or whatever. I think that a lot of brands could play with the dirt and germs one. Picking your nose and then texting. Loving our pets more than our family member. I like that one too. Loving one kid more than the other. Body hair in women. And on the lighter side of taboos, bad breath. So when I was looking through those, I was like, oh, those are already giving me advertising ideas. Now, how can you use taboos for your brand? Like I said, there's a spectrum of taboo and you wanna play more on the sex and death side and a lot less on the should get you arrested side. And I really think that when trying to decide what taboo is right to lean into, you have to potentially think about what your customers most desire. So 
a few weeks ago I did a video that showed a list of human desires. I think that there could actually be something there. And I think that a brand that does this really well is True Classic. They know that their customer wants to feel more sexually desired by women and they play into that a lot in their ads. But I also think that for taboos, you can think more visually. And I think that's why the dirt and germs one could be potentially really interesting. I know for a while, Cerebral was running a bunch of ads that leaned into this oddly satisfying sort of Play-Doh and kinetic sand kind of thing. But I also think you could lean more on the taboo side and think dirt, germs, and whatever. Now, some products can also be inherently taboo, right? So what I was talking about before, the sale of Viagra, now there are also brands like Poopery, obviously, who lean in really heavily into taboo advertising because they have a bit of a taboo product. Same for a brand like Tushy, right? And then there's a spectrum. You don't have to have a taboo brand necessarily to be able to lean into taboo advertising. So again, like True Classic, they're the masters of leaning into the taboo of wanting to be more sexually desired by women. And then there's brands like The Perfect Gene and Mountain Bow who talk about certain body parts as a way to feel more desirable to the opposite sex. I've seen a number of personal care brands to really lean into this idea of taboo advertising, like Billy, for instance, who lean into this idea of body hair on women, and they use that to attract and stop the scroll and also get people to watch longer and eventually convert. I think the line that brands like Billy and other razor brands have to toe really delicately is that you can't come out and say, body hair is bad or body hair is a taboo. They have to really take the stance of, hey, you have body hair, that is a fact. If you want to get rid of it, we have a product for that, but they can't perpetuate this idea that women have to get rid of body hair, right? So that is something that they try to be really careful in in their advertising, but they can lean into that taboo by showing it up close and personal, which a lot of brands would shy away from. And I think the cool thing too about a brand like Billy is they're gonna do a combination, right? They're gonna show really beautiful image graphics of their razors and it's bright and it's colored and it's perfect for millennial and gen Z, but they're also going to show the up close body hair UGC or a studio shoe or whatever. And that contrast is something that really serves them in the long run because it's adding a lot of variety and it's also getting them a lot of creative winners, I'd imagine but I've never seen inside their ad account. Another brand that does this really well is Love Wellness. Now they're a female supplement brand. They've been around for a while. And what's kind of interesting is I've noticed over the last few months, they've really leaned into this idea of saying the things that you're not supposed to say and really leaning into their messaging to get people to stop the scroll. Things like this and this. I mean, if you're seeing this kind of stuff, on your social media feeds, you're going to stop because that's something that you're not really used to seeing on social media, right? And between all of the influencer shots and all of the highly curated shots that your friends are trying to make. And then you see something like this and you're like, what? What the? Something else is happening here. It is partially product-based, right? Because they're solving a problem, but this is not a strategy that they were doing all along. And it's not the only strategy that they're doubling down on. I see a lot of skincare brands too, also leaning into this idea of taboo advertising, particularly Curology or Zitstica, where they're showing images of acne or popping pimples up close and personal. So in a way, these brands are also kind of leading into this idea of like, I, I hate to say it, but oddly satisfying or like this kind of can't look away nature. But when you peel back the onion layer, you're seeing that, oh, actually our society has viewed acne or has viewed body hair as the sort of taboo in our culture. And these brands are taking that up front, close and center and showing it in a way that their competitors aren't. And that's it. Are you gonna try taboo advertising for your brand? Let me know in the comments below. And I can't wait to see more of these ads pop up in my feed because this is a fun one. I'll see you guys later. Bye.